just want to thank you for um, uh, you, God. Thank you that we get to be here in your presence and uh, and just gain from you and receive from you. So, Lord, uh, our prayer for tonight and also the rest of the session is to uh, receive from you. Uh, we all need something different in this room. And that we really want to receive from you and all that you have for us. So be with us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to do some introductions. Uh, if you uh, don't know what class you're in, you're in a class called Emotionally Healthy Christianity. And if you're in the wrong class, uh, this is your time to walk out now. Um, I do uh, want to uh, always give this option. Is, uh, if, if after the first week or even in the middle of the first session... You realize this is not for you, that's fine. No hard feelings, you can walk out. Just please let me know, send me an email, send me a note. Let me know that this isn't for you and you want to do something else. Um, this is going to be a really good class. I've been wanting to teach a class uh, like this uh, for a while. We've been trying to find the right time in the schedule, and this fall seemed like the right uh, time for that. I'm going to tell you about myself first before we kind of get started with the class. My name is Tim. Uh, some of you may know me, some of you may have had a class with me, some of you may not uh, know me. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about me. Uh, married to my wonderful wife, Melinda. She's teaching in Awana. I forgot what age she's teaching. Maybe one of your kids she's teaching. Sparks. Sparks? She's teaching Sparks. Anybody have kids in Sparks? Yeah, there we go. All right. So my wife is teaching uh, there. And uh, we've been married for 11 years this past summer. Uh, we have been coming to Grace Fellowship for about four years. Well, actually, almost four and a half now. We have two kids. Uh, both are in Awana right now. Eliana, who is six, going on seven next month of November. And then Elizabeth, who is four years old. Big news, we uh, so this life stage of me trying to plan for this class is uh, we're trying to buy a house. So we bought a house this summer, and uh, we closed last Friday, and we're moving in uh, this Saturday. Thank you. Uh, it's our first ever home that, uh, that we own, we both rented. We, we rented for the first 11 years of our marriage. Uh, in 11 years of being married, we lived in seven different places. So uh, it feels really nice to tell my wife that she doesn't have to move for a while and that she gets a permanent place of her own. So uh, we're really happy about that. We finally got her place, and my wife's been wanting a, a house for a while. And we finally got it. So that's sort of the craziness um, in our life. Um, we, uh, we do a lot of different things here at Grace. Uh, my wife, uh, before, she's doing a lot of this year. You can close the door, thank you. Uh, my wife taught uh, kindergarten class for uh, the 11 o'clock service for about two and a half to three years. Took a break to do that, she's doing a one and now. Uh, I uh, do a lot of different stuff. We also did a small group. We, just, we, we did a marriage group for about two and a half years, took a year off, and we're launching a group uh, next year. Sunday, or Sunday, Sunday after next Sunday, that came from our grouping group, and uh, our new group has uh, 14 people in it, so it's awesome, we're excited, and uh, we decided, hey, you know, we're going to get a house, let's use it for the glory of God, and let's have a big small group, so we have a small group, so we're looking forward to that, getting back into the community and that and such. Um, for what I do here at Grace, I'm a volunteer here at Grace, I've, I've volunteered in many capacities, I've done in small groups. I've done uh, event planning here, I've taught uh, the two-year-old class for a season of my life, and, uh, but currently, one of my main role here is I, I get to teach here, I teach new classes. This is my ninth class here at Grace Fellowship, and uh, I have loved every single one of them. Every single one of them has a different identity and a different sort of culture, and uh, I know this one will as well. I, I, I love uh, what, I get, what I get to do here. Um, hey guys, come in. Uh, like the movie theater, when you have to sit in the front row, uh, when you're late, there's some seats up here that you have to sit. We will, uh, uh, we will accommodate more seating uh, during the uh, next week, knowing how many people we have. And there's somebody walking in right now. Let's let them know they can come in. Alright. Hey. Is there a seat here? Or there's, there's two seats here. One and two. One and two. One right there, one right here. Right. Thank you. Sorry. If you can work whatever. You can get to know each other, one really uh, well. Yep. 
Take one of those seats. So, for those of you who came in late, uh, I've been getting an introduction about myself and sort of background. Uh, so, the math class here at Grace, I loved every single minute of it, uh, doing this, and I, get to, I love what I get to do. I love all of you guys because everybody's here is so receptive. Uh, my background, uh, we lived in the capital region for almost seven years now. We moved from downstate New York, and uh, we moved up here uh, because uh, we felt God called us to move up here. We uh, didn't have a job up here, we didn't have much up here, we decided that we felt that God was really moving in the capital district and the Alton area, and we moved up here and found jobs and summer up here. I originally from the West Coast, so yeah, I'm a West Coast guy, and uh, I lived on the East Coast for too long, 13 years, and I still have trouble getting used to the snow and the ice, but it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you just have to just deal with it. Um, you know, it's, it's a typical uh, East Coaster, they really embrace, like, the, the seasons and the snow, and that's, that's not me. I just, I uh, keep my head down, walk, keep walking straight, and just, and just go with it, and, and pray that spring comes really early every day. But, but we love the people, we love the area, we really love that this is where God uh, called us to, to uh, before coming to Grace Fellowship. Uh, currently, I serve as a business manager of a company on Call uh, We do online uh, sales and sell our product. I've been doing that for four and a half years. Uh, prior to that, I was a senior pastor uh, in the capital region. Did that for about two and a half years before taking a break from that. Uh, I went to Nyack College, which is downstate in Rockland County, and been with Nyack. I uh, did a bachelor's of uh, science in cross cultural studies. A minor in pastoral ministry, and then after that, I have a master's in divinity from the Alliance of Theological Seminary, which is also a night. Focus on church ministry. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I just want to. Any, any questions from that? Yes. Where did you move to? Like, oh, the exact oh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I moved to uh, East Cuba, New York. <laughs> and anybody from that area? New York? Yeah, I think we talked about. Yeah, yeah. East, East Cuba, New York, and. Uh, a little far from my taste, considering you know I work in Colony and we, we actually attend the the Lake campus. It's funny, and um, you know you know at Great College we have four campuses, and uh, we're really close to Greenwood campus. But because of all of our involvement here, we attend the Lake campus. So we drive past the Greenwood campus <laughs> to come here. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm friends with Pastor Greg, so you know we're good friends. He, he knows that, I'm, that I'm, I pass the campus every time. That's the dynasty program. The dynasty territory. Okay, I won't tell my neighbors. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, East Cuba's here off, off the mountain 20, and uh, it's, it's a really nice place, and we really enjoy it. So yeah, good question. Any other questions? All right. We'll talk about your parents. My parents? Yeah. Okay. Um, my parents, uh, they are currently uh, missionaries in the country of Cambodia. They are in um, Phnom Penh, which is the um, capital city of Cambodia. Uh, they, they were... Um, they felt called to Phnom Penh because uh, Phnom Penh, you know, it was in the 70s and the sort of communist, you know, communist and, you know, uh, <coughs> killed fields and very much of a, a, a Buddhist uh, country. Uh, but over the past 20 years, it's been very much, uh, not Christianized, but Christianity has spread. The name of Jesus has been spread and has gone really large, except in the cities. It's, it's only in the rural areas and the countryside that, that all these villages are, are Christian. But in the city of Phnom Penh, they uh, are not it's, not, it's very, still very pagan, very Buddhist, uh, very Eastern religion. So my parents have a ministry to uh, politicians and high-ranking business officials. So they reach out to people in government, people in the military, people in high business capacities, and just try to share the gospel with them. Uh, but they did that. Uh, they did that uh, in their retirement age. They, 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 uh, they're in their 70s now, and they, they did this about five years ago. And five years ago, they had a chance to retire. Uh, from their jobs, and instead of uh, retiring from their jobs, they decided to become first-time missionaries uh, in their late 60s. So, yeah. Yeah, did you know that story? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Is that why you, you asked that? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and an update. Okay, and so, you all need to give my wife a hug when you see her. Yes. Uh, because um, the reason we got our house is um, my parents are going to retire in four years, 
and my wife has uh, agreed to let them live with us when we retire. Permanently. Oh, so, uh, if you see my wife Wanda, uh, give her a hug, and, and uh, not many wives would take their in-laws and say, uh, you just stay with us for the rest of your lives, but she did. So, wow. yes, yes. Awesome. So, it, the, the good thing is, uh, my parents love her, she loves my parents, so, you know, and if, if she wasn't game for it, I, I wouldn't have uh, gone through it, but yeah, so, uh, the deal was, um, uh, they would help us a little bit with the down payment, and we would give them rent free for the rest of their lives. So, so when they retire in four years, they'll come and move with us. Yeah. How do you sign up? Sure. <laughs> no other way. No other way. Yeah. So we, we got we got we got a raised branch, and then the bottom we're going to use for the next four years for ourselves for our kids. But in four years before they come, we're going to remodel them, the bouncers of the raised branch, and just make a little apartment down there for them. So. Yeah. Um, any other questions? All right, so I want to get to know you guys uh, in, a, in, a, in a big class. Um, uh, we can go on forever, so keep this short. Um, but, you know, uh, if you want to share, you want to share. Uh, here, here's some things I want you to share. Um, your name, obviously. Obviously you have name tag, but just share your name. Uh, what church or campus you attend. Uh, I've noticed that not everybody who takes my classes attends Grace Fellowship, so you attend another church. Let us know what church, if you attend Grace Fellowship, let us know which campus you attend. Um, or how long, you, and how long you've been attending here. How long you've been coming to Grace. So, uh, let's do this. I'll write it down. So, we all come here for different reasons. You know, maybe somebody signed us up. Uh, no, I want to I I make sure that I have enough. But thank, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, so, maybe somebody signed us up. Maybe you saw the title was catchy. Maybe the book is catchy. Um, maybe you want some healing in your life. Um, the reality is, we're all here for different reasons, but the point is that you're here because I believe that God wants to do a work in your life. Um, I, love, I love saying this a lot, is uh, you can go as shallow or as deep with God as you want. Okay. In, in our life, I love that God gives us the option and the choice to go as shallow or deep with Him as we want. This class, if you are willing, right, we can go pretty deep with God if you are willing and able. Uh, 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 part of uh, spiritual transformation and spiritual formation is um, taking the step. Okay? So you signing up, right? That's a big step. That's a big step. In, I, don't, I don't go over this uh, syllabus. But you signing up is a big step. You showing up on the first day. What do you realize? That's a big step. I, I, be, I, I said, I've had nine classes here at Great Fellowship, and you'd be amazed by people who sign up and don't come. It's a huge step to come and, and to show up, right? But the, the, the third step is, it's another big step, is coming after the first day, right? So, so, I, so, uh, um, for, so for my summer class, right, we had 85 signed up, okay? On the first day, uh, that went down to about 65. Second day, they went down with a 50. And then by the end of the six week class, we were at, we were at 30, 35 or so, right? Still a good number, right? But it, it takes a lot of uh, discipline to sign up, number one, which you guys did, and to come here, first day, but to stay with it. So, what I want to say is this don't be uh, fearful of a few things. Don't be fearful of the topics, okay? Because this is all about love, this is no, this is no condemnation, we're all family here, right? So, don't be afraid of the topic. Don't be afraid of where God wants to take you, number two. And don't be afraid of the size, okay? We, 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 we can make room, we'll add a couple more tables. Don't be afraid of size, don't be afraid of any of that, all right? Let me, let me go over the syllabus, and then uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, my contact information is on top. Uh, email address, um, website, Twitter, phone, text. I'm available when you need me. Shoot me an email, send me a text, uh, call me, uh, message me on, on one of these uh, platforms. Uh, the website's very important because I put all the audio and video on the website, so in case you missed class or you missed something in class, uh, it'll be on there. Just so you know, I do edit out stuff like uh, discussion and sharing time, so all that time we have on sharing, that, 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 that doesn't get in the tape. And the tape only looks at me, so no one sees you anyway. So, if you do this class, some people are wondering, oh, you had a really short class. 
Well, that's probably because we had some prayer time and stuff, and that's why the teaching time was only like 20 minutes. So, if you miss class and, this, and the tape's on an hour and a half, it's probably because I had to edit some stuff out. But, uh, if you do miss class, the audio video is on the website. Description. Most people have read this, but I'll go over it again. Emotional healthy Christianity helps people grow in the health of their soul. We are often limited by our past wounds, our current behaviors, and our faulty thinking. These can be blocks that prevent us from being who God created us to be and experience intimacy with the Father. We will use biblical principles to help with the healing of the soul and overcoming the broken and sinful areas of life. This class is a spiritual journey and it will help facilitate your journey to wholeness as you process and go deeper levels of awareness and repentance to the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to make clear the word journey. Um, that uh, we are on a journey together, and I'm with you on this journey. We are doing this together, going on this path together. So do not feel that you are alone in this, and do not feel that uh, this is a lost cause, that we are in this together. Class goals. This class is designed to provide participants with insight into the soul and inner life, their own and others. So if you mentioned about how to minister to others, this class will help you with that as well. Students will be instructed in principles of an emotionally healthy spiritual lifestyle and also participate in exercises to deepen their own understanding and experience of life in the Holy Spirit. We will learn principles of what it truly means to live an emotionally healthy Christian life. Each participant will engage in exercises and experiences that will facilitate his or her own understanding and healing. This is important. By engaging in each session, each person in the class will eventually understand how to help others have a healthy relationship with God. So not only do I want you to receive in this class, which many of you will, but I want you to come out of this class being able to bless and minister to others. <laughs> class format. This class is a classroom style learning environment. What that means is that it's presented in an academic format where the majority of the class is lecturing. However, there will be plenty of room for questions, discussion, group work, and a strong experiential component prayer time, etc. like that. This class is not, it's not, a replacement for authentic Christian community found in small groups or mentoring relationships. If you are taking this class because you desire authentic Christian community, you will be very disappointed. But this class can and will lead you to experiencing community with others, but by no means a replacement. Any questions? I put that down, be right, because people, by God's grace, most people have really enjoyed my classes, but the people who have not enjoyed it, who have complained that we don't have enough small group time. Right? This is not a small group. We have small groups here. The goal is, right, so, so you can learn and hopefully lead you to community and that next. Alright, so, the, page two. Growth learning model, page two. Our prayer is that God will touch our heads, hearts, and hands. Number one, our prayer is that God will give us insight and wisdom into what it means to live an emotionally healthy life, right? Our head. Number two, our prayer is that God will minister to us and heal the broken areas of our life, our heart. And then our prayer is that we can be people who help others. Hands, head, heart, hands. You know, I look at Matthew 22, verses 36 38. The guy goes, Teacher, you know, to Jesus, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's the first and greatest commandment. Right? And, and notice that, that Jesus said that loving God, right, is all of us. Right? It's, not, it's not just our head, it's also our soul, our strength, and our heart. See, too many times in our Christian discipleship process, we focus on the head. We focus on getting uh, head knowledge. We, we do a lot of learning. We do a lot of, a lot of reading, right? And which is all good. Because Jesus said, part of loving God is with your mind. Right? Romans 12 says, the renewing of our minds. Right? But, but there's a key component that says that we need to love God with other parts of us, our soul and our hearts. And that area of discipleship is often not addressed right, in our Christian community and not dealt with in our Christian communities. Because right? it's easy to keep reading, it's easy to get head knowledge, but if I don't let God change my heart, I can't love Him the way He wants me to love Him. Right? And then Jesus said to this person asking the, law, asking the question, and the second commandment is to love others. Is love yourself, right? So I can't love others 
If I don't have a proper relationship with God, and if my relationship with God is only in my head, it's incomplete, right? But I have to be my head and my heart, and actually not only my head and my heart, but what I do with it, that makes a difference. So this class will encompass all that, right? You will get knowledge, but you know God's going to make sure that He's going to touch your heart if you let Him and change your soul. But then from this, you're going to be able to take what you know and bless and minister others. Questions? All right, class expectations. Number one, attend as many classes as possible. Uh, each session builds upon each other. Uh, we're together for nine weeks, so you better get used to each other, better uh, like each other, better like me. Uh, ideally, I, I know things happen, right? I, I know things get in the way. Ideally, I, I want you to come to six out of nine. If you can really try, I mean, obviously, I love being home nine and nine, but you know, I'm, I try to be realistic. If you can push yourself to be here at six out of nine times, you'll get the most out of this class. Um, if, if you don't come, if, obviously, if you miss like eight, I'm not going to kick you off the last day and say you can't come. But uh, you're not going to get the, the most out of it um, as you need to. Number two, read the assigned readings, which we will go over later. Do not freak out or about that. Number three, Engage in large and small group discussions when necessary. Uh, we will uh, have breakout time for small groups, uh, and table groups, breakout time in big groups of discussions. Please participate in that. And number four, we are going to memorize Proverbs 4.23 together. Right? Uh, above all, guard your heart by everything you do close from it. Okay? Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. So, 10 minute classes if possible, do the readings, engage in discussion, and memorize Proverbs 423 by the end of the class. Class core values. Number one, I mentioned this before, a collective journey. Okay. We are on this journey together. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are a family. We are taking the steps in Christ together. No matter where you are on your journey, right? No matter if some people would be brand new Christians, some people would be Christians for a long time. Regardless of where you are in your journey, we're on this journey together. Number two, and these are core values of this class. Structure, time, and flexibility. Uh, as you can see, I'm a very structured person, obviously by having a syllabus. Uh, but I, I'm very structured in, in the way I do my teaching notes. But I also have tremendous flexibility that I like to be led by the Holy Spirit. Um, I, have, I, I'm like this weird, I have this weird hybrid of... Being highly organized, highly structured, but highly led by the Holy Spirit. That's it. So that's a unique mix that I teach. And for those of you who have taken my classes, you understand uh, how that mix uh, plays out. So, it is structured, but there's a lot of flexibility that I will deviate once the Spirit leads me to deviate. Number three, a resilience to be present. Not only physically, but also emotionally. Right? Um, and you know, I'm not talking about like, you know, you got a car accident and I want you to be here right after the day after. But, you know, I'm saying like, oh my gosh, it's September and it's still 75 degrees outside. I don't want to go to class. I'd rather go to the park or something like that, you know? Or I had a long day at work and I just want to sit on the couch and mope, and mope right? Like, or you know what? I had a really bad day and I feel really bad. I don't want to be here. Um, those are the times I need to be here, actually, right? So I need to have a resilience to be present, not only physically, but emotionally, you know, um, it doesn't matter what, what kind of day you have, what kind of week you had, good, bad, right? Come here and let God deal with whatever you have to present to Him. Number four, openness, safety, and confidentiality. Okay. What, stay, what happens in the classroom stays in this classroom, all right? What happens in the classroom stays in this classroom. But there, uh, unless, it, unless it happens to you and you want to tell others, that's fine. But whatever happens to someone else, whatever you pray for, it stays within these walls. Uh, it stays between all of us. But be, feel free to be open. Be, feel, feel free that this is a safe place to share. A safe place to, you know, a safe place to, to risk, right? Maybe, maybe um, uh, you, you're not used to praying for somebody, and God is used to let to pray somebody during your prayer time. It's safe, right? It's t t take risks. Um, in my nine classes I've taught, I've never had an issue with people uh, sharing secret or gossiping what happened in class, and uh, um, yeah, I don't think I'll have another problem with that. So just know that this is a safe place to be you, okay? And also, like I said, uh, this is a no judgment zone. This is a no judgment zone. This is all about grace. It's all about love. No judgment, no condemnation. None of that happens in here. 
Number five, trust. Um, I, I understand that for some of you who don't know me, I've never taken my class, uh, I need to build trust. I understand that. And I think it's easier in a nine week class. Uh, it takes me a few weeks to uh, build trust with you, and I understand that uh, for many of you who haven't had my class, I don't have your trust yet. That's fine. Uh, because it, it takes time, trust takes time to build. But my hope is that we get to a point um, uh, where we trust each other. And for those of you who take my classes, uh, before, I, I had that trust. It's easier for me to say some things about your life that I may not be able to say if you were taking my class for the first time. And number six, uh, a sense of expectancy. Uh, many of you shared uh, uh, what you hope to get out of the class. It's a lot of awesome stuff. Uh, if you come with expecting uh, from God, uh, God will blow your mind. He'll blow your doors off, right? Uh, what I find is, uh, whenever we come to class expecting, if we're really open with God, He, uh, he, he, he blows our mind, you know? And, and, and God continually wows me uh, every time I uh, teach a class or engage in a group. And uh, just come with expecting to see that God's going to do something, and that uh, God's going <coughs> to transform your life. Um, and that will help your class. Okay. Alright, the book is called Soul Keeping by John Forsberg. Um, I try to, um, I do, I do something different, uh, with, 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 uh, with classes. Sometimes I have a book, sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I actually write the book. Um, but, um, this time I decided to do a book, uh, and I tried to do books that are sort of, uh, maybe you haven't read. This is a newer book, uh, published with this past year, uh, called Soul Keeping, Care for the Most Part of You. Uh, this is, uh, on sale. Uh, in the lobby today, uh, before you came. They're not selling anymore. If you miss uh, buying this, you can buy it in the bookstore at any of our weekend services, our cafe uh, bookstore, or you can find it online as well. And if, if money is an issue and you cannot afford this book, please see me and I will get you a copy. Also, if you are a couple, you definitely can share the book. You don't need to buy two copies. Uh, or if you have a close friend in the class and you want to share with them, fine. If you want to do an e-reader, or you just you know, you're, you're, you need the e-reader, okay? Um, so, it's, it's the hard copy, it's not the study guide, it's not the DVD curriculum, it's the hard copy uh, by John Ortberg. And um, I've uh, really enjoyed uh, this book. Uh, this, this is a guy named Dallas Willard, who, who did a lot of spiritual formation writing, and he was a professor at USC in California, and he passed away. And basically, uh, John Ortberg was uh, mentored by Dallas Willard, and then basically this is his book, so sort of accumulating everything he learned from Dallas Willard. So it's a really good book. Um, like I said, uh, if you have a problem getting it, uh, please see me. If you can't afford it, please see me as well. All right. Materials. You need a Bible every week, or you need to access a Bible on your device. So you have an iPad, a phone, a tablet, a laptop, whatever. Just bring a Bible. A hard copy will bring a Bible on electronic copy. Uh, number two, something to take notes on. This is optional. All right. For those of you who have uh, taken my classes before, you're going to be really shocked to know that I do not have a workbook with this class. And I do not, yeah, you're like, wow. I, I, don't, I don't have, uh, I probably won't have handouts. I might have handouts, but I probably won't. So if, you, if you're the note-taking person, bring a notebook, bring paper, bring a tablet, bring something. But you don't have to take notes. Uh, there's many reasons why I did this. Uh, one, uh, I wanted to be highly experiential, uh, and two, I was trying to buy a house. So, um, <laughs> uh, so those are the two reasons why I don't have. But usually, I have like a really comprehensive thing there. Also, please bring this book to class uh, every week. Uh, so, what this book is. Uh, for those of you who know me, know that I don't like to teach off curriculum. I don't teach off a book. So what this book is, it's gonna, it's sort of, um, it, it parallels sort of our journey. So we're gonna be doing reading at home. We'll be doing discussion, being in the class, and then we'll do teaching time. Not ending off of this, but it's gonna help with that. Make sense? So I'm not teaching off of this, but we are discussing it, and it's gonna help our journey. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an added part of our journey. If that makes sense. All right. Any questions? Yes, Ron. All the references that you have here, you will be teaching from. I will get to that when I get to that page. 
I'm not going to answer any future questions. So I'm going to put the answer. Huh? Yes, the wind got there. So, page three. Any questions on page one or two? All right, page three. Class schedule. I, uh, uh, every year from 6 30, 8 o'clock, I try to start around time. I try to end on time because you probably have kids, I have kids, and we all have work or school tomorrow. So. All right. Uh, I am very clear what we're going to be looking at. Uh, we're going to look at the keys to spiritual transformation. Uh, Next week, I for principle going beneath the service surface. Uh, week three, going back, understanding how our families and past shaped us. The fifth session four, who am I living in our kingdom identity? The fifth session, resting in God's presence. The 29th, <laughs> it's funny. This is your Halloween. A fear factor breaking the fear that hinder us. Wow, I didn't, I didn't find that. But yeah, all right. Fear factor breaking the fear that hinder us. Uh, this is a daughter day moment. Uh, November fifth. Let, let it go, the power of forgiveness. November 12th, hear from God, allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to our soul. And November 19th, unleashing a lifestyle of spiritual health. So please come to all this. Don't pick out, like, oh, I like this one, or I'm scared of this one. And, and, and. Just, if you come, come to that. All right, reading schedule. I broke the reading schedule in reading dates. Um, so, so, for example, tomorrow is the 25th. So from the 25th to the 1st, you're supposed to be reading the prologue, the introduction, chapter 1, and chapter 2. Does that make sense? But, okay, so for those of you who are readers, who, who, who's here uh, considers yourself a reader? Well, how about you, right? If you're a reader, you can finish this in probably about a week, okay? Easy. It, it's, a real, I, it's a super easy read. It, it, it flows, okay? But who's here is not a reader? Alright, good. Alright. I've given you a cheat sheet. You see the highlight in each week? Alright. If you are not a reader or you're pressed for time, let's just be honest, right? Some weeks, be honest, some weeks you have a busy week, right? Hard day at work, uh, kids are driving you crazy. It's just a busy week. If you don't have time to read and it's Tuesday night, just read the highlighted chapter. That makes sense? Alright. I want you to read everything here. But if you cannot read, if reading is too much for you, only read the highlighted chapter and that will save you some headache. Got it? Alright, I, I, I don't want it to make it feel like a, uh, you know, a, a, a legalistic thing or a pressure thing. I just want you to really learn from this. And like I said, for those of you who are readers, so it, it'll go, you can read this in a week. It goes by that fast. Uh, and the chapters are super short. Uh, some of the chapters are like five, ten pages and it goes by really quick. Alright, but make sure you have time for reading, because we will discuss that in class. Alright, page four. As I mentioned before, uh, note taking for this class, there'll be no workbook or handout provided with class session. If you desire to take notes, you can bring your own notebook or talk to us. Just note take notes, optional and not required. Class audio and visual. The audio and video recording of each class with this session will be uploaded to my website within two days after each class. Website will be useful to, to you, you if you happen to miss class or need to go back to listen and watch the teaching session. You also have permission to share the link if you feel free about the session will be useful to someone you know. Bottom of page four is our our uh, verse, Proverbs 423. We're gonna memorize it from the NIV version. And what we'll do is uh, uh, whether you have it memorized or not, every uh, class, before class. We'll say it together uh, from memory the best we can, and hopefully uh, by the end of the nine weeks you, you should be able to remember it. So, if you want to say this with me, uh, let's say it together. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4:23. All right, we'll keep doing that each week. Page five. All right, this is Ron's page. Um, re references. Um, I am very clear. On, uh, and very transparent on how I do my research and study. So for this class, uh, these are the uh, sources that I've used uh, for this class. So each one of these books, I've either read and it influenced me, or I pulled stuff out and it's used for each of our nine sessions. So if you wanted, if something if, uh, hit you and you want to go further with the topic, any of these nine, any of these nine, any of these books are a good uh, place to go to. All right. Any questions from this syllabus? 
Nope. All right. Awesome. All right. Open your Bibles to Matthew 19, please. Yeah, we'll close it this way. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Also, I will remind you again, I need your name and email on the list outside. I don't have it. Make sure I have your name and email on the list. I send out weekly emails, and I need to know uh, who's in the class so we can accommodate you uh, um, better. Okay? There, there are five more people who could not be here tonight, so I need to get a full list so I can have um, um, the custodians uh, set up this room in a different way to make sure it works. Okay? All right, Matthew 19. So, what we're talking about is spiritual formation and what spiritual formation is. Okay? I want to read you a definition of spiritual formation, and this is from a guy named Dallas Willard. Spiritual formation is the tradition of Jesus Christ, is the process of being transformed of the inmost dimension of the human being. The heart, which is the same as the spirit or will, it is being formed, really transformed, in such a way that its natural expression comes to be the deeds of Christ done in the power of Christ. I read that again. This is from Dallas Wilbur. Spiritual formation in the tradition of Jesus Christ is the process of transformation of the inmost dimension of the human being, the heart, which is the same. As a spirit or a will. It is being formed, really transformed, in such a way that its natural expression comes to be the deeds of Christ done in the power of Christ. So we're talking about spiritual formation being formed. It's about being formed at the core of who you are, your heart, your soul, and being transformed. So who you are on the inside is who you are on the outside of the expression of Christ. So we're in this passage, back to 19, and we're at verse 16. Matthew 19, verse 16. <clears throat> Just then, a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me what is good? Jesus replied. There, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? You inquired, inquired Jesus. Inquired. Jesus replied. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I've kept, the young man said, what do I still lack? So the first point I want to bring out of this is this. Spiritual formation is being able to ask the right questions. Point number one is this. Spiritual formation is being able to ask the right questions. See, notice this man. He goes to Jesus and he wants to know, what do I need to do to get eternal life? Right? It seems that this guy wanted to get an easy path to get to the fast track of spiritual growth. Right? Some of us don't want to do that. Right? I'd rather see the end point than take the journey to get there. Right? We live in a society that is very instant. Okay? We, we, we want things fast. We want things quick. We want things easy. Uh, most of our generation growing up is we don't want to deal with the long haul, the long play of things. Right? We, we, we want our marriage to be great, but we don't want to do the work to get there. We, 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 want, to, we want to do well in our job, but we, want, we don't want to do the steps to progress and move up. And this man, I think he was trying to get the fast track to heaven. But the thing is, he was asking the wrong question. See, spiritual formation is asking the right question. 
Now, if we're talking to some of you already, some of you know what that question is. Okay? And you know what you need to bring before God. You know whether you said it maybe in our sharing time, or maybe you have it in your heart. You know what those questions are. But for some of us, you may not know what the right question is right now. And that's fine. You may not know what to ask God for. But part of spiritual transformation for formation is this. Be able to ask the right question. Let's move on. Verse 20. All these I have kept, the young man said. Right? The guy said, I've done everything. What do I still lack? Verse 21. Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possession and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come. Follow me. Point number two. Spiritual formation requires us to leave something behind. Spiritual formation requires for us to leave something behind. See, at the core of this man's heart, see, the, the evil thing was not the money, but the evil thing is what was in his heart. And in his heart, and in his soul, was a wall between him and being formed and transformed by Jesus. And for this man, it was his possessions and everything that he had. And spiritual formation is this. It requires us to leave something behind and give it to Jesus so we can move forward. What is it that you need to leave behind? What is it in your life that you need to leave behind. I believe that this class, over these nine weeks, you will have opportunities, maybe just once, maybe every week, to say, you know what? I'm going to behind. I'm going to leave the hidden parts of my life behind. I'm going to leave my family wounds and the way I was raised uh, in a in cultural ways behind. I'm going to leave fear behind. Depression, loneliness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave uh, my intimacy with God and, and my negative views on that. Leave that behind. Part of your formation is leaving something behind. And my prayer and I hope is that we all get there and get to that point. Let's keep going. Verse 22. When the young man heard this, he went away sad. Because he had great wealth. Point number three is this. Spiritual formation is our decision. Notice after verse 22, where it said he had great wealth, it didn't say Jesus went after him. It didn't say Jesus chased after him. It didn't say Jesus tried to pull him back. Your growth your formation, your transformation is purely your choice. See, it, it, Jesus is basically saying, you want to follow me. If you want the keys to eternal life, if you want the life that you actually wanted, it is here for you. It is available for you. And, he, and to the man, he says, it's here. Just deal with the stuff that you need to leave. Right. And, and the man, because of this wall in his soul and a thing that was blocking him, he couldn't deal with it. And he walked away, he left Jesus, and he was sad because he had to give up something. He had to do something that wasn't what he wanted. He wanted a simple answer, but Jesus said, it goes deeper than that. Spiritual formation is <laughs> You made a great decision, by the way, by signing up. That's a pretty good decision. <laughs> you made a great decision by coming here. Right. But you know what? It is in there. The decision is being here. The decision is being open to God. The decision is understanding right, that God wants to transform and change you. I have. I don't know what to expect uh, coming into this class. I never do. If it's just, I never know. I, I know what I'm going to teach. But I don't know, basically. Sort of, sort of the agriculture, and uh, I have a really good, good feeling about 
uh, where we're going to head to. And I uh, really appreciate you guys being here. And what I'm going to do is get. But I grab all that whole program because many people think, my goodness, here's a chance for Jesus to save that person. Mm -hmm. or, or in case he actually, you know, cast him aside, it looks like he didn't go after him. But you got to remember, this is before Christ died on the cross. Yes. You can't tell him that he can, he can do something. Christ is Yeah. That's the exciting part. Yeah. So I, 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 once I figured it out, it was great yeah. to know that he didn't forsake me. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. The fact that he could have done something, then he'd have done it right then and had salvation. Yeah. But it's a growing process. Yeah, it's a growing process. And you know, uh, in the Bible, it, it's God from beginning to end as a loving God who constantly pursues his people, you know, and speaks to his people. And it's our job to listen. To hear, to obey. I, I, I believe God is speaking to all of us. You know, uh, Psalm 1901, right? The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim your name, right? It means that God is speaking to this world. He's speaking to us, right? He's constantly pursuing us with the love of the Father. And my, my, I hope that you understand that the love of the Father desperately wants you to choose Him. Desperately wants you to choose Him every day. Desperately wants you to give everything you have to Him. Your cross and follow me. When you pick up the cross, you actually throw these things down. Yeah. Right. In order to pick up the cross, you've got to drop something Drop something else, right? Yeah. And we're unwilling to drop it because we like it. It's us. Yeah. yeah. When you go over and pick up the cross, you're a different person. Look yeah. all the friends that won't like you after you pick up the cross. No. Man. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you said pick up the cross and follow me, but if you give your cross, you're going to drop something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Stuff. Is you ready for the next eight weeks? Hey, let's let's, let's close the prayer. Hey, what, what I want you to do is, uh, if you feel comfortable, I want you to, uh, uh, whether you do it high or low, I want you to put your hands out like you want to receive from God. You don't have to do this, uh, but this is symbolic. But if you want to, uh, if you feel comfortable, put your hands out like you want to receive from God. All right. So God, I want to pray uh, for everyone in this room, including myself, Lord. We come up with open hands uh, that we want to receive from you. So even right now, even tonight, Lord, we want to, just, uh, we want to receive from you. Uh, so we want to feel your embrace and welcome everything we have. Our, our hands are open because we want to receive tonight and over the next eight weeks. Our hands are open because we surrender our will to you. Our hands are open because we expect and hope. Thank you that whatever we were dealing with, you can take it to the cross. Being tired, being depressed, being weak, being uh, inadequate. Whatever we have, we take it to the cross and give it to you. So Lord, we want to pray for uh, change to happen in our lives, change to happen in this room, change to happen in this church, in this community, and where we live. We do this all for your glory and for who you are in our lives. Jesus' name. Amen.